Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is creating a kind of Far Cry and Hitman-esque detection system in which the AI is going to be able to look at the player for a few seconds before they actually fully see and detect them so it kind of gives the player that extra couple seconds to be able to run past or run away if they didn't realize the AI was there and there will also be a kind of nice indicator above the player's head to show that they are being spotted and when they have then also been spotted. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So notice I'm hiding behind this cube here, the AI can't see me, but if I were to walk out here, we have this come up on screen, if I were to hide again, it's going to go back down perfectly like so, working as you can see there like that. But if I were to let this fill up, what you'll notice is it then turns red and the AI will start chasing me, but if I then hide again, it will continue chasing me until it then fully goes away and the AI stops and if it sees me again, it then isn't as it was before. Now you'll notice this AI obviously isn't animated, I'm not going into detail of creating the AI itself, just this little system which we've got here. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. One thing I should also mention as well is obviously in those games it kind of also the indicator points towards where the AI is, as you can see there, this one isn't, however I do have another video going over that which you can obviously watch to advance upon that as well, and if you want I can make a part 2 specifically for this system too. So before we get into the rest of the video, I just want to very quickly say I have set a new goal for us to try and hit 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you are not subscribed already and you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing as it really does help me and the channel out quite a bit. So again, if you enjoy what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And thank you very much and let's get on with the video. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a blueprint interface to make this nice and efficient so we can communicate between the AI and the player. So we can hit control space to open up our content browser right click, go to blueprints, blueprint interface, and then name this whatever you want. I'm going to name mine detection interface. And we're going to open it up straight away. In here we're going to create four different functions. The first one is going to be start detection, so when the AI first sees the player. And for this one we're going to add an input, naming this one AI, so what AI has seen the player. And I'm going to set this to a character object reference as my AIs are characters. Now for you this might be different, they might be pawns. If they are, set them to a pawn object reference. But basically, whatever your AI is, set that in the variable there. Then we're going to create another function with this one being stop detection. So when the AI stops seeing the player and we're not going to add an input for that. The next one will be chase or start chase. Let's rename it to start chase actually, that makes more sense. And then the fourth and final one will be stop chase. And we don't need to add inputs or outputs for any of them apart from start detection, which we did here. So once we've got this set up, we can compile and save as that is all we need to do in here. Just create the functions and we'll use them later on. So we can now close this like so. And next up, we want to actually create the widget, which will show the kind of symbol, the icon, the indicator on screen to show that we're being detected. So we hit control space once again, right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint, a user widget, and I'm going to name this one detection widget as that makes the most sense for me, and we'll open that up straight away. In here we want to go to panel and add in a canvas panel perfectly like so, and on this all we're going to add in is a progress bar, because that is how we're going to be filling and emptying our indicator is with a progress bar. So you might have noticed if I open my content browser you can see I've got an empty and fill detection meter. If you don't already have some for yourself import them and I will leave links in the description down below to the ones I'm using. I just very quickly made them on Photoshop and you can see empty is just grey, fill is white as you saw at the beginning of the video. Make sure they're on a PNG background and import those in and then we can then use these on our progress bar. So if we select the progress bar the background image wants to obviously be the empty version which for me was, let me just drag it in, detection meter empty, and then the fill image wants to be detection meter full. We can see the image size on this is 242 by 43. It doesn't have to be that for you, but that's what it is for me. So I'm then gonna resize my progress bar accordingly. So size X will be 242, and size Y will be 43. So it's the correct size that I want, perfectly like so. And then if I just move this somewhere we can see it a bit better, You'll notice if I increase the percentage, it's then going to be filling in like so. However, this isn't exactly how we want it. So firstly, I don't want it to be blue, I want it to be white. 
So I'm going to change the fill current opacity just to be white like so. But again, I also don't want it to go from left to right. I want it to go from the middle out, as you saw at the beginning of the video, and as you see in the games where this is used. So we can change the bar fill type from left to right to fill from center horizontal, and you'll notice we now have it working perfectly like this, how we would want. So again, you can see when we're being detected, it'll go like this, and when we're not being detected, it'll go down like that, working perfectly how we would want it to work. We're gonna zoom out and then just place this on the screen where we want it to be. I think somewhere around here is gonna be fine for me. That's where I had it at the beginning of the video, and I think that works quite well. So then I'm also just gonna set the anchor to be where it should be as well. So just where the icon is. So we can compile and save that. And that is all we need to do in here. All we're doing is just simply creating the icon itself and making sure it can fill and empty as we want, but we're not doing the code for that in here. So we're gonna close that like so. The next thing we want to do is we want to set up our AI so we can actually now start detecting and stop detecting the player. So what we're gonna do is we first need to create the AI itself. If you've already got that, don't worry, just use the one you've got. If you haven't got one, I'm just gonna very simply create one by duplicating my character blueprint. So I'm gonna select it, Control C, and then Control V to duplicate it, hit F2 to rename it, and I'm just gonna name this one AI, perfectly like so, opening it up straight away. In here, we don't need any of this, so we can delete all the code, and delete the camera boom and follow camera, and delete the turn rate gamepad, compile and save, and this is all we need. We just basically want the AI to look like an AI and have the character movement so it can move around and all that good stuff. We're gonna to go to the viewport now and the only thing we need to add in here is so obviously go to add component and we want to add in pawn sensing so it can actually sense the player. Now you can mess around with this all you like. So what you can do is change the sight radius so how far it can see at the sight angle as well. Here it is, peripheral vision angle and this just controls how they're gonna be able to see the player. I'm just gonna leave all this default as it works perfectly fine for me for this scenario. The only thing I am gonna change, however, is the sensing interval down from 0.5 to 0.2. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I want the AI to be able to stop detecting them after 0.5 seconds, so I want it to be less than 0.5. So I could put this at 0.4 if I wanted to, but I'm just giving myself a, bit, a little bit of leeway in case I wanna change it later on. So set this to whatever you want as well, but I wouldn't recommend going higher than 0.5. And we'll compile save that and go to the event graph like so. Also, if you don't know what I mean with the sensing interval, I'll explain it in just a moment's time when we actually come to using it. So with the pawn sensing still selected, we want to scroll down to the events and get the on C pawn. So when the AI actually detects the player, we want to kind of override this so it detects it slightly differently. What we're gonna do is hold on S, left click to get a sequence like so. Then zero is gonna go into another sequence like this with then zero going into a do once, because we only want to do this once, so this will fire off every single time it sees the player. And we only want to do this part of the code, i.e. starting the detection, when it first sees the player. Out of completed of this, we want to do the start detection. So what we're gonna do is drag out of pawn on the on C pawn and get start detection message. So this is the function we created in the blueprint interface at the start of the video. So we're gonna call that and you'll notice the target is the pawn, so it's gonna be calling this function inside of the pawn, which is gonna be the player that this detects. And we're gonna connect this into completed of the do once. So again, it's only going to start the detection once when it first sees the player. I'm just gonna double click this target blue line just to keep it nice and organized to get some root nodes so I can move it about like this. Then let's go back to the start detection function and you can see we can input the AI. All we want to do is just get a reference to self as the AI that's detected it is obviously the one we're currently in at the moment. So that is how we start the detection. But how do we then stop the detection and restart it? Because it's obviously a do once, but we do want to be able to detect it again after the AI has stopped seeing it. So out of then one of the first sequence, we're going to get a re-triggerable delay, and it's re-triggerable, and the duration of this, I'm gonna to set to 0.5. So this is what I was talking about with the pawn sensing. So basically after 0.5 seconds, if it hasn't seen the player again, we're gonna stop the detection. So for this, you can set to whatever you want. So if you want it to be one second, i.e. the AI cannot see the player for a whole second and it will still be detecting it, you'd put one here. So whatever value you want for that, you input here. I think for me, 0.5 seconds is perfectly fine. And because I've got 0.5, I obviously want my pawn sensing to be less than 0.5, 
hence why I put it at point 2. And again a retrigger delay is here because that will restart every time an input goes into it. So this will only go out completed if the AI hasn't seen the player for more than half a second because every time it goes in it will restart at point 5. So I hope that will make sense. And like I was saying out completed we want to stop detection so we're going to come out of pawn and stop detection message like we did with start detection. Connecting that into completed of the retrigger delay there. And again I'm going to double click this to get some root nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. Then out of the stop detection of this we want to go into the reset of the do once. So this is how we can then detect the player again. So once we've stopped the detection it's then allowing us to start it again if the AI sees the player. So I'm then going to just move this over to give ourselves a little bit more room like so. I think this should be fine. And then I'll double click this to get some root nodes once again like so. Now this is all we need to do for starting and stopping the detection. What I'm also going to do is just add in a little bit of chase code as well just so you can see it working. Now if you've already got the chase code perfect you just call that here instead of creating it again or whatever code you want to do here. So out of then one of the second sequence I'm going to go into a branch and the condition of this branch wants to be a new boolean we're going to create in the bottom left here under variables naming this should chase question mark or is detected and that's what's going to go in the condition like I say there. Then false we're not going to do anything because we shouldn't chase it's not been detected. True we're going to do our chase code. So we'll go into an AI move to with the pawn being self we can just use this reference we've got up here and the target actor is just going to be the player which again is our pawn which we've got over here like so. So we can just drag that in from the reference we've already got to it like this. So I hope that will make sense. So again we're going to start the detection and then if we haven't seen them we're going to stop the detection but once we've started the detection if we can then chase which we'll set later on it will then chase. And now to be able to set this chase boolean we are going to be setting it in the AI but calling it in the player blueprint. And again that will all make a lot more sense once we actually do it. So to actually set it what we're going to do is go to class settings up at the top go to implemented interfaces it'll probably say no interfaces unless you've of course already added some. We're then going to add an interface with the one we created earlier so I called mine detection interface like so. And you'll now notice on the left we have a tab called interfaces and we've got all of the functions we made and we obviously made four. We want to use start chase and stop chase so you can just double click those to get them in here like so. Now all we're going to do in here is start chase we're going to set our should chase boolean to true and stop chase we're going to set it to false so tick and untick like so. Now off of the stop chase what I'm also going to do is get an AI move to with the pawn being self and the target actor also being self and what that is going to do is it's going to stop the AI actually chasing us because if we don't do anything it will continue to chase so this will actually allow us to then just make them stop their movement so you can use stop movement immediately as well if you wanted to but I'm just doing this in case I want to change it later on to go somewhere else. Now for you you might want to make this instead go back to a random roam code or go on a patrol code or just go back to where they came from so if they were maybe standing guard by a door or a gate or something you might want to make them go back there. For me again I'm just going to make them stop moving but here you do the code that you want. So we're going to compile and save that and that is all the code we need to do for our AI. We're just allowing it to start and stop detecting the player. So we can close this and while editing this video I actually found out it was quite long, it was about 30 minutes in total so what I'm going to be doing is splitting up this video into two parts and I feel like this is a good end to this video for part one, I think this is the most natural way to do it. So sorry about that, sorry that's not in one video and sorry this is a bit of an unnatural ending because again I'm obviously doing this in post after editing it but again that is what we're doing. So obviously you know what we've been through today and in the next version we're going to be finishing off the character side so the AI can actually start and stop detecting and therefore also chasing us with the progress bar filling up on screen as well. But I don't want to be here for too long doing this bit. Again this was today's video, it's part one. Part two will be released the day after tomorrow but obviously if you're watching this in the future that doesn't matter to you, you can just go ahead and watch it straight away. But again sorry for the unnatural ending and we'll be finishing this off in a part two. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful and if you did please make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.